In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this neon lights text effect using Adobe Illustrator. Now to get started today, you'll need to head on over to dafont.com and grab yourself this neon city script um, font. All you need to do is download it and then install it on your computer. If you're in my class, I'll give you access to this font. However, if you're watching on YouTube, then just hit the link in the video description below. Okay, so once we have that font installed, we are ready to go. So jump into Illustrator and make yourself a new file. And just head up to the web templates and choose the minimum template of 1024 by 768 pixels. Once you click on create, you get your empty artboard on the screen. And we want to fill that up with a rectangle first of all to get a background color in. Okay, so I'm just going to click and drag from the top left down to the bottom right. And from my properties, I'm just going to turn that stroke off. Okay, now the next step I'm going to do involves the color panel. If you can't see the color panel, you might need to get it from your window menu. And when I talk about panels today over here on the right hand side, if you can't see any of the ones that I've got, just go to your window menu and you will find them hiding in there. Okay, so we're going to start with this color panel. And what I want to do is hit the three little lines up the top right here and just change uh, my color here to grayscale. And I'm going to move this slider along to about 85%. So it's going to make a dark gray for this colored shape. Okay, now once we've got this dark gray in, what we're going to do is put a texture on top of this. And we're going to make a brick wall. It's quite easy to do in Illustrator. So all you need to do is make sure you've got the rectangle selected. Go up to the Effect menu. Head down to Texture. And then choose Texturizer. Now... Illustrator has remembered my settings from a previous session, uh, but if you can just make sure your settings on the right here match mine, then you should get this brick wall effect as well. So we're in the texturizer. Our texture is going to be the brick. Our scaling is going to be set to the maximum 200%. So you can see when we go smaller, it just get, makes those bricks smaller. So make it 200%. Um, the relief is going to be set to 5. If we go any bigger than that, it starts to look a bit funny. So just leave it around 5. And the light is going to be coming from the top left. Okay, once you've got all that, you should have your dark grey brick wall. And we'll click on OK. Oops. The next thing we're going to do is go to our layers. And we're going to just rename that layer to bricks and lock it into place. And what we're going to do next is put a vignette around this brick wall. Now, for those of you that don't know what a vignette is, basically a dark shadow that goes around the edges of the shape. And it will help us focus on the center of the image, which is going to be our text a bit later on. So we're just going to draw another rectangle that fills the entire artboard. And we are going to go to our um, gradient panel here this time, and we're going to put a radial gradient on it. Now for the colors in this radial gradient, I'm going to start on the left here, this little white button. We're going to double click on it. And we're going to make sure we've got white selected. You can even go to your swatches and select white if you wanted to. And turn that opacity to 0%, which makes it transparent. So we're going to start completely transparent in the center of the frame here. And it will slowly become a little bit um, darker as we get towards, towards the edges of the artwork. Now this black color here, I want to make this pure black. At the moment you can see it's still in grey scale, so it's got that kind of grey effect to it. So what we need to do is double click on this black slider here, and in our swatches panel choose pure black. Okay, and that will give us the black we're looking for. So that's the effect we've got now. I'm happy with that. The only thing I want to do now is just adjust the shape of this gradient. So I'll need to go and grab my gradient tool from the toolbox over here on the left. And with this slider, you can um, stretch it in and out a little bit if you would like. Or you can zoom out a bit, which is what I'm going to do, and grab the top or the bottom of it and just bring it down into more of an oval shape. Okay, so something like that will look good. We've got that nice black border now around the brick wall. It is obviously way too dark though, so we need to drop the opacity of this um, vignette. So in our properties, we've got the opacity just here. Let's make it about 50% and see what it looks like. That's pretty good. All right, so now we've got this um, nice black vignette around our brick wall. And the last thing I want to do now is um, make this entire brick wall a bit darker. So I'm just going to go on and lock this layer into place. I might even give it the name vignette. And I'm going to draw one more rectangle. I've drawn plenty of these straight across the top of the artboard. Now it's going to come up with a gradient, which we'll get rid of in just a moment. We're just going to go to our swatches here and make it pure black. And then we're going to go to the properties 
and we are going to drop the opacity opacity again so let's try it at 50 percent yeah i'm pretty happy with that actually so i might leave it at 50 percent so that's how our background is going to look it's a really dimly lit brick wall with a slight bit of light towards the center there okay so i'm going to lock that layer um i'll just call that eye shadow that's probably a good enough name for it and we are now ready to start adding some um, text onto the page okay so let's close those layers grab our type tool from our toolbox and simply click once in the middle of the page and in capital letters i want you to write neon on one line press enter go to the next line and write lights now you obviously can't see that at the moment so let me just um, make that a bit bigger for you actually size 200 is what I'm going to be going for so I'm just going to type it straight in size 200 so we can see neon lights there now in the paragraph section we're going to center it you have to move it back onto your page there um, the font we want to use is that neon city script font and I'll just make it white so you can see what's going on here all right, so that's how it should be looking at the moment. Capital letters to write neon lights, which has been centered at 200 point in the middle of our page. Now with this text selected, so you've got the blue border around it, we're going to go to our appearance panel now, and we're going to click on the word characters. We might have to double click on it actually, and that will open up our character colors. You can see it's got no stroke and it's got a white fill. What I'm going to get you to do is turn that fill color off which means we no longer have a fill color or a stroke color so it's invisible text trust me it's still there we just can't see it at the moment and once you've done that click back up here on type no appearance and that will just close that little characters section off all right so what we're going to do next while we've still got this selected we're going to put in a new stroke okay so in this appearance panel um, in the character, uh, not the character section, in the appearance panel, we just go down the bottom left here actually to add a new stroke in. So when we press this new stroke button, you'll see that a new stroke and a new fill appear. What I'm going to do to make life easy is just drag this fill layer above the stroke layer. So if I just minimize these for a sec, you'll see it looks a bit neater. I'm going to drag the fill up above the stroke. Okay, and now with this stroke down below, we can start applying some effects to it. Okay, now this stroke we're going to make white. We'll change the color there in that little color box to white. And we're going to change the size of it to about six point. Five or six point will look good. Okay, so that's the base color we're going to be using for our text, which looks good. Now I'm going to get you to add another stroke. But before we do that, we need to click on this characters bit here. So that way when we make a new stroke, it just goes above the word characters, but below what we just created so watch this i'll just click this new stroke button and this new stroke appears okay with this new stroke we are going to make it about 13 point and for the color we are going to use this black and white gradient effect okay now with that gradient effect we're going to edit that and the way we edit that gradient effect is have this stroke selected and go up to your gradient panel in your gradient panel we're going to change the direction of that stroke to 90 degrees so it goes from a top to bottom kind of gradient um, now we're going to change our two colors to light orange and light pink so this left slider double click on the white dot and choose a light orange you could probably go even a little bit lighter than that so you can always go to your sliders here and play around with them a little bit okay, that's pretty good and then the other end where it's black at the moment needs to be changed to a light pink. So just go and select yourself a really light pink. You can play around with these sliders there to get the light pink. It's something along those lines. Light orange fading into light pink should look pretty good for the first stroke. Okay, back to the appearance panel now. I'm just going to uh, click on the word characters again. And I'm going to make another new stroke here. And this time we are going to put in a gradient at 20 point. So we've got the gradient in already. We're going to up it to 20 point in size. And I'm going to edit the colors again here. Okay, so back to the gradient panel. So make sure this stroke is still selected. Back to the gradient panel. And we're just going to darken both the orange and the pink colors up. So all I'm going to do there is just drag this G slider, the green slider, a little bit to the left. 
It's almost going to be a reddish kind of color we're getting now. And then for the pink one, we're just moving it to the left as well to get a much darker pinky color. Okay, so something along those lines. A darker orangey color and a darker pink, pink color. All right, so that's good. Back to our appearance panel. We're probably getting sick of this, but we're going to do it again. We're going to click on the characters um, here and we're going to make another new stroke. We're going to leave the size and the color for now. What we're going to do instead is put an effect on it. So down here you've got this effects button. If we click effects, I want you to go to stylize up the top here. And we're going to choose an outer glow. Um, some options will come up for your outer glow. Just make sure they're the same as what I've got here. So we're going to lighten um, this outer glow as our blend mode. The color needs to be a pinky color. Uh, the opacity is going to be 70% and the blur is going to be 7 pixels. And then we're going to click on OK. And you might just see a little bit of a glow happening around our text. We're then going to go to our effects one more time. Well, we've still got that stroke selected. And we're going to go to blur and choose the Gaussian blur. And we're going to set it to about six, 5 or 6 pixels uh, for the radius. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so you can start to see that glow coming in. Why didn't that glow just come in? That must have worked anyway. Oh yeah, it's working. Okay, that looks good. Um, so I will just minimize that stroke. We're done with that one now. We're going to do yet another stroke. We're not finished yet. So click on characters. We're going to add another stroke in. We're going to leave the size and the color yet again. And this time we're just going to add a Gaussian blur effect to it again. So this time go to your effects, add in a blur and add a Gaussian blur. And this time we're going to really ramp it up to 20 pixels. Okay, so it's going to be quite a big blur this time. We'll click OK. And for the last time, we're going to click on characters and we're going to add one final stroke. Okay. Um, we're going to make this one black. So we're going to change that gradient color to pure black. And the size is going to be around the 12 point mark, 11 or 12. You should be happy with. We're going to do a couple of effects here. So we're going to go to the effects panel. We're going to go to distort and transform. And we're going to go to transform. And what we're making here is a shadow to go behind our text. Okay, so we're basically going to offset this stroke from our text by moving it here. Um, we're going to go minus 35 pixels on the horizontal and 35 pixels on the vertical. Okay, and you can see now in the preview we've got this black outline appearing just offset from our um, lit up text. So click OK once you've moved those, minus 35 horizontal, 35 for vertical. And just to soften that shadow, we're going to put a blur on it. So just add one more effect and choose the Gaussian blur again. And we'll go with about a 10 pixel radius for that. And click on OK. And you can see just in the background there, oops, got a bit too close, a bit of a dark shadow behind the text. All right, so that is your neon lights all done. If you want to be able to resize this and have the effects um, still apply to it, it is worth going up to your edit menu and preferences and then choosing general. And just make sure that the um, scale strokes and effects is turned on. It should be by default, but just make sure it is. And that way you can then um, grab your text, resize it. You can even um, add different words, whatever you want to do to it. So the last thing I'm going to do is just align that text in the center of my page. So I'll horizontally and vertically align the center of that text using my align panel. And we are done. That is how you create some cool neon light text effects using Adobe Illustrator.